Hello, and thank you for joining us on the Exploring Consciousness podcast. I'm your host, Donna Rebideau. This podcast is a field guide for people who would like some help and guidance on their spiritual path. I introduce, review, and share consciousness in its many dimensions. This is for the curious adventurer who isn't afraid of asking for help. So dream, dare, and let's begin today's episode. Hello, Exploring Consciousness Podcast listeners. This is a historic day today. Today, I get to introduce my co-host, Dr. Natasha Williams. Natasha Williams is a board-certified sports chiropractic physician and former athlete who specializes in the rehabilitation of injured athletes. He has treated collegiate athletes, mixed martial artists, powerlifters, bodybuilders, athletes from many other sports. Dr. Williams graduated with a degree in chemistry and a degree in psychology. This is why I like her, because we're both psychologists. <laughs> yeah. Psychology before, atten- before attaining her doctorate in chiropractic from Western States Chiropractic College in Portland, Oregon. She has been practicing chiropractic since 2003 and combines her education and experience as an athlete to identify proper biomechanics. That's the professional part. But Natasha, not only is my chiropractor, but one of my dearest friends. Mm. We have been talking about metaphysical things for about two years, and she is such an advanced student that it's perfect for her to be the co-host. So today, not only is her introduction, but we're going to talk a little bit about Natasha and how she got started in metaphysical or chiropractic, whatever you want to start with, Natasha. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Uh, It's always so interesting hearing uh, somebody read what you've accomplished, right? You're like, huh, yes, that that is true. (laughs) Yeah. So this has been quite an adventure for me. Um, I remember being a young kid and having um, just odd things happen to me and I had no place to put it uh, because I had nobody to talk to about it. Uh, my, my very first memory as a kid was having trouble getting back into my body after a dream. And, and I, thought, <laughs> I thought everybody did it. I thought everybody did it, right? Me too, yeah, they did. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, growing up in Canada, Edmonton, Alberta, they had this weird radio station on AM that I totally loved. And it was kind of like what you're doing, Donna. It was exploring consciousness. And that was my first introduction into, hey, what you're doing is um, not so odd. A lot of people do it. And... Um, and that was my first start. They, they talked about aliens. They talked about traveling uh, to different dimensions. It, it was wild to me, absolutely wild, because I had no clue of the possibilities. Um, so that was, that was my start. That was my first inclination into, oh, I have something, um, and I'd like to explore it a little bit more. Yeah. And you probably didn't have anybody to talk to. We're- so you're you're Canadian, but you're you were born in the Caribbean. I was I, I was born in um, Toronto, Ontario, to oh. parents from the Caribbean. Yeah, ah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Toronto. Yeah. So I'm near Buffalo, so I knew we were close. I, I could tell see? your energy. Yeah, see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then and so uh, she's uh, Canadian, and then moved yes. out to the west of Canada. But I, hmm. let's go back to, you didn't really have anybody to talk to. Were you able to talk to anybody? Was anybody else having these experiences? Because usually kids will say something and then go, oops. Yeah. You know, I remember talking to um, my mom about it, and she was probably the most open to the possibilities. Because I remember her telling me that we came from a long line of healers. And at that point, I didn't know what that meant. I meant, well, grandma was a a doctor and (laughs) I had no clue 
what she meant by that. Um, but then we never delve into it because I think there was still some sort of fear around it because she was very superstitious and there was a lot of those elements. So I think she, she was nervous about inviting things in that I, I guess maybe she didn't understand and she didn't want to give that to me. So she knew I had something, but we never got in depth. We, it, it, it was never talked about to a higher level. Yeah. So what did you do then? So you're, you're, how old were you then? You said it's your youngest memory. Were you like in grade school? And Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I was, yeah, I was young. I was probably maybe se seven. Yeah. Seven when I had my first experience about like, I can't get back into my body. It was terrifying after a dream. Um, so that was, that was seven. And then I, I kind of buried it. I was curious, but I buried it because it was, it was strange. It was odd. I had nobody to talk to. And my parents being from uh, the Caribbean, uh, migrating to Canada, there was a sense that we have no time for uh, foolishness. It's like, we're, we're here, we're giving you an opportunity and you will study. You're, you're, you're supposed to study. So I didn't really have no time to like, you know, oh, let's, let, let's do some crystals. And no, you're here to study. So that's what I did, Donna. I went you to did. school. Did it well. <laughs> yeah. And so you went right to, did you, were you able to do any other kinds of things besides, I mean, I know that scared the heck out of you and you buried it. Did it come back when you were like in, usually people come back when like 17, 18 or they're going into college mm -hmm. or did anything happen then? Yeah, well, see, that's when I start to explore because almost every night, and this is when I got older, probably about 15, 16, almost every night I heard footsteps in my bedroom. Terrifying, Donna. Absolutely yes. terrifying. And I and you, you know, I got the courage one night to ask, who is this? Right? And it was my grandpa. Um, yeah. And as soon as he said, it's your grandpa, it was like all the fear just went away. And I thought, well, how nice is it that grandpa's coming to <laughs> visit and make sure everything is okay? So that was the first time that I felt, oh, I don't have to be so scared about this. Um, yeah. So, and so that was 15, 16. And then um, study, study, studied on my way into med school. And it was funny how it didn't quite work out because I was put on a waiting list and I have, I'm, I'm a tourist, you, you know, so I have no patience for waiting lists, the uh, waiting list for uh, med school, but I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to wait. So my other option was um, chiropractic. And I think that was the best option for me because it allowed me to explore more of this. I don't think I would be the same person, Donna, if I was in, if, if I was trained as a medical doctor. I don't, I, I, I don't think I would have explored this in depth. Um, but as a chiropractor, I needed this so much in order to treat and connect. I needed it so much. Um, so I'm so grateful that I deviated from the path. Yeah. So you're a chiropractor and now you're an athlete too. So you're, mm -hmm. you're still around people and a teammate, but you're still not, even though you don't have the fear, you're still not brave enough to share this with anyone. Ah, it's, it's, you know, I do it in, I do it in a little, like a tiptoe sort of way, right? I kind of first see where they are, you know, in terms of their spirituality. And are they open to speaking about energy and um, things of that nature? You know, a long time ago, because I've been doing this for like over 20 years, in the beginning, there was no way I was going to talk. There's no way. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't that you can talk to anybody like a friend, but no. you still were hesitant. You, you had to begin opening and being 
brave enough to talk a little bit with your patients. Let's talk yeah. about your patients. Yeah. You, you know, um, I've always had um, a sense about what people were ailing from. And I know that the, the physical body will present shoulders, knee pain, all of this. But I understood way long ago that it was so much deeper and it was on an energy level. Um, so uh, there, there's been a beautiful transition. People are so open now to talking about energy and the universe. So that makes it uh, so easy now to talk about stagnated energy and things showing up as shoulder pain, but let's really talk about your shoulder pain. So um, I love the sessions because I don't practice as a normal chiropractor, meaning it's not eight minutes and you're out. It's not a mill, you know, you get 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes um, to sit down and talk really. And as you're talking, I can heal. And um, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. Can you talk about the, it's called clear sentience, your ability to sense mm -hmm. healing and you need that in the healing arts. What's that feel like to you? Did you, did you feel a change? Did you feel like you went from, oh, I'm a little bit nervous about to, mm -hmm. did you always have that sense of healing inside your body or did it evolve? Oh, it, it definitely it evolved. Um, it was like, a sense and a voice. Um, and the voice I would always dismiss because in the beginning, I wasn't able to differentiate between my inner voice and help coming in. Uh, but I couldn't dismiss the sense and the feeling. And, and I was always drawn to a certain place in the body. And people always thought it was magic playing, you know? <laughs> But it was I was I was getting help, um, and as I became more open to accepting the help, then I hear where I need to be, and I hear where I need to put my hands. Um, and sometimes it has nothing to do with the area of the body that is hurting. It's sometimes just on the chakras and opening that up. So that's what I've been doing, incorporating um, a lot of that. But it's it's taking time, Donna. You know, I'm I'm 47, and I started this journey at seven, and I think it's only in the last few years where I'm just like, okay, I accept this. I accept who I am and all of this. But it's taken so long, long time. I love that, and I'm going to ask you about. How did you tell your inner voice and, and the voice that was guiding you? Because doesn't it sound the same? Does it sound a little different? The inner voice is, is also coupled with a feeling. Good. Whereas when I speak, it's, it's just me speaking. Um, and sometimes it's very ego driven. So I can distinguish that between somebody talking and then a feeling that I get. And it's almost like, it's okay. It's okay, just listen. So that's how I've separated the two, yeah. That's really important for people to know because so many people say, well, how do I know it's, it's my own voice? But it took a little practice for you to differentiate. Oh, oh, absolutely, absolutely. It started with me actually being present and first listening to my thoughts and I just listened to the thoughts that were coming in and I listened to that inner voice which was me um you know saying things that were not the best sometimes and it's like it was learning to catch that and understand that there's you and you can stop that pause that and then you can practice um putting in different thought process. And that's how I started before I really got to listen to the other help that was coming in. I had to first check myself, Donna, and mm -hmm. all of the things that I was saying. 
And so I think a lot of people, Donna, go through the day and do not pay attention to what is being said, to what they're saying to themselves. So that was step one for me is acknowledging that there's something going on um, and listening to that first. Yeah. Perfect. So you're doing this and you're going along and some guy comes into your life, this kind of massage person. <laughs> yes. And we happen to know the massage person. Mm -hmm. the massage person starts working for you yeah. and I'm talking to him and I'm saying what are you doing well, I'm looking at this chiropractor and I'm doing this and I said a chiropractor yeah. well I can I can I come over, <laughs> can I, can I come over? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I think you two would hit it off <laughs> oh my god I walked into that building and went, <laughs> okay this is this is my best friend. <laughs> well, let's try meet her first. Because <laughs> your energy came out of the room first. So I met your energy before I met you. Mm -hmm. And we um, we started doing just uh, chiropractic kind of things, me and Mary Lou. And what's interesting and what um, Natasha's not telling you is she's an acupuncturist also. I do practice. So, yeah. 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 So I started saying things to her like uh, so we, we started doing biomechanics on Mary Lou together first yeah and it was we were starting to finish each other's sentences and this is like day one first hour do you remember <laughs> that I do I do well, she's walking down the hall and I'm going well I think she's sloped and then you go a little bit to the right <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> like, oh my God. so we went back in and I said Okay, you're working really hard, Natasha. Can I show you something? And you were so open to that. You, Your ego, you know, you talk about your ego and thinking bad thoughts. I don't think you have a bad thought. Maybe your bad thought is like, can Donna leave now or something? <laughs> <laughs> but I said, why don't, why don't you, um, let me show you this system. And I'll give you, uh, I'll give you some pointers. And here's how you can fix this hip. So we started working together in a way energetically. And I said, okay, um, put the needle here in this motor point. And I think you're, you about fell off your chair there, didn't you? And that yeah. first needle was like, well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I don't have to work so hard. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so that's kind of how we started. Would you yeah. Anything else that you wanted to say about that startup? Like you were shocked, you were happy, you were like, oh, oh my God, this is going to work or. Oh, you know, I remember, I remember that meeting um, so clearly. I, I remember when our massage therapist friend walked into the office and a shift happened and I knew immediately I thought, wow, He's supposed to be here. And at that moment, I didn't know what his purpose was. Uh, such a beautiful person, number one. So he leads with that. Um, and then, you you know, getting uh, to know him was, was terrific. And Nana, mind you, I was asking for weeks to have somebody come to me who can help me explore this on a deeper level. Because again... I had nobody around me. So I asked for it. And then in walks Donna. And it's true. It's true, Donna. I was a little bit hesitant. I did the whole mechanical thing, as you, you know, you're supposed to. But I remember hearing something that it said, hey, ask about consciousness. Ask Donna about consciousness. And I thought to myself, how would Donna know about consciousness? <laughs> <laughs> and the voice kept on saying, listen, just ask her. And that was the moment and it just exploded. And it was from that point on, I thought, wow, how grateful, right? How grateful is this? And, and you've helped me so much, Donna. So I've come from a time where you work, you work, you work, you grind, you grind, you grind. So I implemented that 
thought process, that behavior into my practice. So I worked really hard on the body, not knowing that I could get the same results, you know, doing so much less physically. So that was wonderful because my hands, Donna, you, you know, were, they were getting to a point where it's like, I don't know how much longer I can do this gig like this. And then you came in and everything just shifted, shifted. And it was incredible, Donna. Absolutely incredible. Yeah. So we're working on, we're working on Mary Lou and I'm showing her this stuff. And out of the blue, she says something. I, I can't remember how you phrased it about yeah. something like, well, what do you know about consciousness? <laughs> I paused and I went, <laughs> and I listened to my inner voice going, does she have any idea? Right. Like, okay. So I, right. I was quiet for a minute and it was like, tell her everything. Mm. And I was like, everything? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. <laughs> so I turned and I said, okay, well, <clears throat> Let's begin. <laughs> so we started. Yeah. I don't know if we finished working on Mary Lou that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And and Mary Lou was so patient. Oh my us. gosh. She's always so patient with us. Isn't that the truth? Jeez. It's like when, when we get together, it's like these, these these best friends and we're all giddy and we're all over the place. And Mary Lou just sits there just so patient with us. <laughs> yeah and so um uh our massage friend started to come in and as soon as we started talking consciousness mm -hmm. he had to go leave and work on someone i know that and then mm -hmm. we had another person come in and we could we went anywhere so yeah. i loved it what, what was so nice natasha was your innocence your freshness your your curiosity your genuineness to I want to know everything mm -hmm. and I said okay so I took out a sheet of your paper I don't mm -hmm. know if you still have it mm -hmm. I took out a sheet of paper and I wrote down a map yeah. of everything so mm -hmm. I said okay well yeah. here's consciousness and I wrote I, I would put a box and I and I would put um out of body and I put a box and I put a Monroe Institute and I put a box and I had about 40 boxes <laughs> on this sheet of paper and I turned and looked at you and went okay that's probably enough for today <laughs> <laughs> that's right that is that and is I, absolutely true so I said here's how you can think about mm -hmm. consciousness and all its related types of things even I, I put words there that you didn't even, I don't think you knew. I didn't think you knew about scrying, the ability no. to, so we, we did scrying and uh, we, we did all kinds of things. And so we kind of used that as a jumping off point. I think that map, we, we used that map that day. And then after that, it was just wide open. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I had so many so many questions like that day was so wonderful for me. I could have, I, I know you said that that was enough and I get it, but boy, Donna, I could have sat there for another 24 hours. It was so wild to me. It was like, finally, finally, it's like all of the, these things. I had so many questions. I was, Oh my goodness. I was, I was filled with so much happiness um, that day. And it, it was wonderful because for me, you always allow me to go off on a tangent, you know? I just, you you say something, I'm just like, oh, I need to go over here. And it was always opened to that. And I got so much knowledge from that because it wasn't so structured, which was fantastic to me. Because I'm so, I'm so used to being structured, day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day structured thinking and all of that. So it was, it, it was, it, I, I just almost have no words I felt like I was flying and I was going from universe to universe and I got to touch um, this star. And after I touched this star, I could take off and go to this planet. 
and you allowed me to do that. And I was like, oh, like a kid in a candy store. It was, it, it was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. We did the boxes because I, I never know what someone knows. Yeah, and it's true. Mm -hmm. it, so what I do when I teach, you give a structure. This, this mm -hmm. can start, and the structure can be those boxes of information or definitions. And just give someone a, okay, here's, here's where we can go if you want. Mm -hmm. And you, you said, I don't, I, I can't remember our first, I think it was out of body. I think you yeah. were, you were asking about out of body. And I said, okay, well, here we go. Um, here's, here's the people that we can talk about without a body. And there's like three or four people, William Buman at the Monroe, Tom Campbell, all these people. And I said, but, um, <clears throat> You know, you should protect yourself first. And so it, it just was like giving yeah. you information that, you, and, and, and it's almost like how you do your, how we both do our healing work is mm -hmm. as I'm speaking, I'm also hearing my guides say, go here and stop, go here and stop okay. so that you could continue wherever you wanted to go. And I could, I could go anywhere with you i could go to that star we went to the star and i'd say now look at the star there's a matrix and here's <laughs> yeah we're talking about stuff that people if they walked in the room would walk out because <laughs> they, well, we have no idea what you people are talking about right absolutely absolutely so yeah. every time we get together we always make sure that we have time to talk about anything we go in the room and we say, let's go here we go yeah so it came up that I think I not I think my angel said you need a co-host. I said, okay, I'm not doing so well. Am I being fired or what's going on? <laughs> and they said, You're not being fired. We've been waiting a long time for this to happen. Mm. And we want you to ask Natasha to be your co-host. And wow. so I approached you with that. And I can't tell you inside my angels were, you know, my, you know, my angels and my guides are absolutely hysterical. They are not like, we want you to ask Natasha. She goes, why don't you ask Natasha? What are you doing? We want you to ask Natasha. <laughs> and when right. I asked you, you said yes, they were like, it's about time. What are you doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> so what, did yeah. you, what, what were your thoughts and feelings when I said that? Wow. I was... You know, I was so I was so honored, um, and and I thought, wow, you know how fantastic all this time, you know I felt so alone, and I thought it would be wonderful if a novice like me could journey with you, and kind of speak from one perspective because there's a lot of people still trying to figure this stuff out. And I'm still there with them. So how wonderful would it be if we can like pair that? Me come in with my with my questions. I'm still beginning the journey. So I thought, what an opportunity, right? I've I've always been asking, um, how can I do more? How can I reach more people, you know, outside of who I see in my office? So when the opportunity came to me, I thought. Well, I'm so grateful, just so grateful for this. Um, it's it's a it, it, it's an opportunity that I um, I lavish in, and uh, I I can't wait. I can't wait. And the thing is, it's it's absolutely what you said because you know, as a teacher, um, when I teach Psych 101, I had to mm -hmm. teach the same material thirty years, two semesters. Oh yeah, same material all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But after a while, you you go, "Oh, did I tell that class?" Did I tell my class was right. like, you didn't say that, and I go, "Oh man, why did I tell you that?" <laughs> so what's perfect about this is I'm at that point. I'm at that point, and my yeah. my guides know that. Mm. It says you have to have someone with fresh. Mm -hmm. Curious, I said, it's not quite. You're not quite a novice. You you have experiences, but mm -hmm. what you bring is what what's so very very important is that aloneness. 
And yeah. so what I mean what I mean by that is there's there's so many I mean so many emails, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of emails of how do I start? How do I get started? What do I I'm alone. I don't know what to do. And mm -hmm. so Natasha is going to be bringing I think she's going to talk more than I am. I hope I hope I hope she's this is going to be all her questions. Yeah. All her questions cuz her questions are so fantastic. So how we're going to do the mm -hmm. 2024 how we're going to do this is on monday we're going to we're going to talk about the person so we're going to talk about it from both eyes sets of eyes okay. like, like say i'm just going to put out a name um sean McNamara. Mm -hmm. so sean is my friend and so i i'm going to say here's how I, here's how i know sean here's what sean does and you don't know sean yet right so what's kind of cool is you're going to say Here's what I want to know about Sean. How did he do that? Why did he do? These are the kinds of questions I'm going to ask Sean. And Sean better be ready. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. That'll be that'll be Monday, and then on Wednesday we're going to have Sean, and we're going to allow um, the two of us to interview Sean, mm -hmm. and then on Friday we'll we could depending on how Natasha and I feel about it, we could have a, a an after party. We could say, you know, you know. What did you what did you think about that, um, Natasha? Do you think most people can do that? Because one thing that I I really that kind of bugs me in this metaphysical is when people say this one, mm -hmm. it's so easy anybody can do it, Ooh. and I don't think that that's true. I don't no. think that it's easy. I think you have to practice. Yes. And I don't think everyone can do it because not everyone has the wherewithal. They don't have the commitment they don't maybe it's too hard maybe their life lessons or, or whatever so when right. when people say that i know that's going to be um hard that it's easy and anybody can do it and sure all you, all you have to do when i hear all you have to do hmm. i think i want to go get a cup of coffee or something you know <laughs> right right and you and you've never done that and i've never done that to you so I think we do something different than a lot of people do uh, on their podcasts when we're talking about these kinds of topics. Because yeah. a lot of times I hear, oh, you have to do, anybody can do it. Here's how you do it. Oh. We're, we're, we're going to talk about those things. And um, I'm, I'm also doing another series on choice. I'm doing mm. a one on choice. How do you make choices? And mm. it's, it's in a workbook. So um it, that'll be the point where here's how you go and uh, can do these things. Okay. So. I like it. I like it. Natasha and Donna's workbook on consciousness. Ooh, powerful Donna. Powerful. <laughs> okay, my dear, what else would you like to talk about that we don't know about you or what you bring to the podcast or... Do, do you want people to be able to get a hold of you? Because hundreds and hundreds of emails, that's a lot of emails. What would you like yeah. to do? What would you like people to do? You know, I'm open to people getting in contact um, with me. I just need people to be patient because I do have a, a practice and we are expanding also into the East and West Valley. So busy, busy, but, um, but yeah, yeah, I would, I would love for people to contact me because um, I'm so curious about what people are thinking. So I would love that. I would truly, truly love that. So yeah. So an email, email works the best for me. Yeah. What's your email? What email would you like us to use? So um, you can use the n.williams at azb, the number two, the letter y.com. So n.williams at azb2y.com. And the b2y stands for, I love it. Back to you. Back, Back to you. you. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Back to you. Yeah. So this is good. I, I feel like how I operate is um, not everything up front because. I always struggle a little bit with um, giving all of the information, like all of who I am, all of what I do up front. 
So I think that as we start to get into it, um, I will I will evolve and people will learn more about what I do and what I've been through. So it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, formal necessarily. I love that. We'll absolutely do that. Okay. Okay. So folks, this is an introduction to my co-host, Natasha, Dr. Natasha Williams. Mm -hmm. You are going to fall in love with her. So thank you for listening. And we will be back on some date with our first guest. Okay. Thank you for listening to today's podcast. We publish our Exploring Consciousness podcast on the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of the second week of every month. Please check the podcast schedule and more on our companion website, exploreconsciousness.com. Thank you again for listening.